the two toad this happens to be one of the cutest look at that big snoop look at that big oh can i boop you up boop oh so cute look at this look at this oh my goodness you gotta be careful with those claws you might claw me up oh can i give you a little head massage capybaras are the largest rodent on the planet but these little oversized <laughs> guinea pigs are just babies here come 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 look how cute this guy is isn't this adorable so cute this, these are my homies what's up homies come on what, oh hello see how the quills are are spreading out like this if this animal was upset he would basically just reverse right into me fill me up with quills stab me in the throat <laughs> i might want to back up just a little bit <laughs> What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm currently out Wild Florida with the bros. I got Billy and Andrew right here, head curator. And this guy is taking care of all the crazy mammals on the property. Lemurs, sloths, anteaters, anything that's strange and honestly creatures that you would think are mythical creatures live here at Wild Florida. We're gonna be checking out all their crazy mammals and birds. So yeah, let's go see, come on. All right guys, we're here with Billy and Andrew and we're about to go into a ringtail lemur enclosure. This is really special because I actually used to work with ringtail lemurs and train them. So I'd love to visit a facility once in a while that's got a bunch of beautiful, well-trained animals here. Come on in, nice and safe. Get this double door closed up so we don't have any escapee lemurs. Right. And they're all pretty friendly, right? Yeah, these two are. These two? Oh, you separated the, the ones that aren't so friendly? What's going on, guys? So these are ring-tailed lemurs. They're prosimians, lemurs. They're, they're a crazy primitive primate that broke off and grew on Madagascar. Lemurs are only found on Madagascar, so they're endemic species. They're not found anywhere else on the planet. Look at this. He, he's got them trained to the T yep. to come right here and eat some little raisins. They're nice and happy. You want a little raisin? Oh, it's so sweet. You want a little raisin? Oh, it's so sweet. And these guys are super vocal primates. They actually call to each other out of Madagascar all the time. It sounds like this. And they're super adorable. Look at these guys. And what happens is a lot of people think that these cuties are good pets, and they're not. They're terrible pets. They actually have canines. Oh, look at you. They actually have fangs, like a fox. They have really big canines, and if they bite you, they can slice right through your scalp. So it's no joke. So the best thing to do is let just the zoological associations and facilities like this to have these animals on display for education and conservation work. They don't make good pets. They don't belong in your house. They belong in Madagascar or in a beautiful giant setup at a big wildlife park like this. So cute. Where did you guys get most of these? Well, Retired well, pets? Yep, yeah, pretty much. See, we're separated. This is a troop. Usually these guys are in troops down the wild. Most of the lemur species are in big, big troops. And the rest of this troop is locked out in this side of the enclosure because most likely these guys were somebody's pet. They weren't trained, they weren't socialized properly, and they only know a few people. So they can't be socialized with random people like myself. But these guys are trained to the T to socialize, gently take food out of my hands. Look at that, it's so sweet, so sweet. And they have these beautiful long tails. That's why they got the name Ringtail Lamer. They have this beautiful pattern going down. Look at it, it's so cute. They like to stand up on two feet. They're such beautiful animals. They'll have one or two babies when they go through the gestation period and have their young. Just so cool. And it's so crazy to think that this is a critically endangered species. We end up seeing more of these animals in captivity than there are actually out in the wild. So cool. Thank you so much, Billy. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna go for a handshake, but okay. thank you for the raisin. Yeah. Very good. Want some more? Come to me, hello. King Julian from Madagascar. And their, their hands are so soft, they're so nice. Look at these soft little hands. Look at them, he's my little Ewok friend. Hello, I love you so much. So when I used to work with lemurs, a good friend of mine, mutual friend with Andrew and I, uh, Justin Iglada, also known as Vanilla Ice, he trained me how to train <laughs> lemurs. And he actually trained me to train these lemurs to go to a station on command like he's doing, and also like high five on command, get into a kennel on command. And that's what they've done here as well to make working with them safer. Because 
Nothing upsets a lemur more than trying to restrain a lemur and put it somewhere it doesn't want to be. So to actually give them positive reinforcement, give them treats to go into certain areas, these lockouts, makes it safer for the animal and safer for the keeper. Because like I said, it's so easy for this lemur to get upset and use its big fangs to slice open your scalp. And believe me, myself, I'm sure these guys too, Andrew and Billy, and my good friend Justin, we all know how bad a lemur might, a bite can really be. Nasty stuff. You ever been bit real bad? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's not fun. It's like a knife. Yeah. It's like a knife to the scalp. Even their nails too. They can scratch with their nails. Dude, like they're so cute. So cute. This, these are my homies. What's up, homies? Come on. What, oh, hello. Oh, he's so cute. So, this is what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna we're gonna get a plane ticket. We're all gonna go to Madagascar together, and then we're gonna go help your friends, and then we're all gonna come back here to Wild Florida and tell everyone how it went. Lemurs. The crazy branch off the primate family, Prosimian. We have three African crested porcupine. We're gonna to try to wake them up. Probably won't be too hard to treat. Ooh. Oh, look at this, look at this. Look at this. Ooh. Oh, hello. What's up? What's up? You want some food? Oh, check this out. This is an African crested porcupine, black and white porcupine. And this species is found in Africa, but there's also a very similar species or about the same animal found throughout Asia as well. If you guys are big fans of the channel, you'll remember that when we were in Thailand, we had one of these guys hanging out behind the restaurant in the national park coming out and feeding with us. What's up, dude? What's up? Oh, can I see those those teeth? Oh, those big, those big rodent looking teeth. Oh, these guys are so cool. So what's really interesting about porcupines is a lot of people think that they shoot their quills at people. It's not necessarily true. What happens is, is they either do what's called a mock charge where they try to scare off a predator or they reverse and they back these quills into the predator. The quill then comes out and sticks into that oh, predator right there. Here you go, I'm sorry. Here, here's your peanut. You want your peanut? They love roots vegetation, anything. I'm sure they love sweet potato, right? They do love sweet potato, They, they yeah. love all their little roots and whatnot. These guys are just complete herbivores, munching down on everything. So even the toughest big cats, things like hyenas, leopards, lions, all these different big predators in Africa would not want to mess with these guys because if they try to make a meal out of a porcupine, they're going to end up with a face full of quills. And the thing about these quills is that when they come out and they go into the skin, over time, as the muscle moves, the quill travels further and further throughout the body. Some people have been quilled by North American porcupines, have been quilled in one part of their arm, and then had the quill come out of their shoulder months later. So it travels throughout the body. So it can be very dangerous depending on where that quill will travel. So at the end of the day, these guys don't shoot quills. They just poke you with them, and they come out, and then you're stuck with a big keratin needle in yourself. So basically, these quills are modified hairs, really tough modified hairs. And if I look around, I'll probably be able to find, oop, like this, a shed quill. So these guys actually shed the quills. And look at that. They're real strong. It's like a little light, light frame arrow. So if that goes in your skin, that sharp quill, it's not going to be fun. Imagine being a leopard trying to make a meal out of a porcupine and getting a face full of quills. That's not fun. Have you ever been quilled before? No. No? Not. Billy? I have. Oh, how is that? Tell us about it. It is painful. And it burns all day long. Oh. They're barbed too, so they stick They got in. these micro hairs on them that just help dig further and further. So, oh, there's another one. How many do you have in here? Three, three. total. Two, two girls and one boy. This is so cool. There's three beautiful African porcupines. Hello. Oh, you got a little quill. I dropped it on your forehead. I'm sorry. Let me have it. Look at that. Oh, what are the names? Peter Quill and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you got going on Stella in here? Stella is the one you're petting right now. This is Safari at my feet. So then we have Spike which is our male right back there. And you know, I'm a big fan of the mullet, so I really enjoy these animals. They got a real cool hairdo, I can connect with them. More like a mohawk, really, it's crazy. Like, ooh, see this, see how the quills are, are spreading out like this? If this animal was upset, he would basically just reverse right into me, fill me up with quills, stab me in the throat. They might want to back up just a little bit. And that's basically what happens. If a big cat tries to make this animal feel threatened, it's gonna poke them with the quills. And usually, these guys know what they're capable of and they're real relaxed when they're crossing roads and walking through the savannas of Africa. There are videos of these guys just casually walking by pride lines because they know those lines know better. And if they don't know better, they're gonna learn a bad lesson. So cool. It's you. So sweet. 
Billy, you've done a great job with these animals. Look how they, they, they act towards you. They love you. That is just too cool. Ooh. Watch out, because I'm not quills all day. Just gotta be real calm. Oh, he pulled that. Thank you. Yep. There you go. Oh, hello. Would you like the nut? Oh, you're so cute. Such a sweet animal. Look at that. They are so gentle. Billy, you've done such an awesome job desensitizing them and getting them used to interactions. So do you guys have this to be a part of the tour? Like you can yeah. actually interact with these porcupines? Yep, yeah, we do encounters with the guests. <clears throat> so here, have a nut, have a nut. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, we're really big on hands-on oh, interaction. Look at this, look at his face. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so everyone gets the chance to do this. So you guys can actually pay to get a tour where you can interact with lemurs. Oh my goodness, you're so sweet. How are you? sure? Oh, oh, so sweet. Give you a kiss, you big capybara nose. Ooh. Oh, look how sweet the face is. Look at that. Oh, oh, and those big rodent teeth. Oh, so crazy looking. So you guys can actually pay to get on a tour and interact with these porcupines, with lemurs, get to see all these wildlife shows. This is one of the coolest wildlife parks that you can visit in the world. Honestly, like Wild Florida has come so far because over the past couple years, this place has been building out like crazy and expanding like crazy. How many more acres did you guys just get? Uh, almost 300. 300 acres to expand a safari. And I hear a rumor they might be getting a rhino soon. So that's going to be cool. We have to visit when they get that rhino. I've always wanted to ride a rhino and fly an owl to my wrist. <laughs> All right, so we're done with the porcupines. Now we're going to see the world's biggest rodent from South America, the capybara. How many are in here? Three. Three, okay. Are they nice? We'll see. Yeah. We'll see, okay. <laughs> Let's see. We'll see how this goes. Here, come on in. We're going to close this door behind you. <laughs> oh, they're babies. Oh, look at them. They're so young. Oh, look at this. All right, let's see. Oh, you hear that? Look, they're super vocal. Check this out. Oh, you want some food? Some corn? You hear those little noises they're making? They are vocal. That's how they talk to each other. Capybaras are the largest rodent on the planet, but these little oversized <laughs> guinea pigs are just babies. Here, come, come, come. Is the bamboo in your way? Come, come, come. Look, do you guys come up on the rock? Huh? You wanna do some exercise? Oh, what's up, baby? Oh, so since they are rodents, they have giant sizers inside their mouth. You can't really see it right now, but he's able to chew through this corn like it's nothing. Look at this. This is just so cool. And they're heavily aquatic little mammals. Look at this foot right here. You see this? They actually have webbed feet. Check that out. They have webbed feet like ducks because they jump into the water and they swim around like little hippopotamuses, right? Little little hippos. Wanna get some bites? And these guys can get about 100 pounds, right guys? Like about 180 pounds, 80 pounds to 100 pounds. They're not huge, but they are the biggest of all the rodents. They take the cake for being the biggest and sadly, their favorite food of the green anaconda, the heaviest snake on the planet. You know, with the biggest snake on the planet, you have to have a big food source. So instead of eating rats, or uh, small mammals, they eat the biggest rodent on the planet, the capybara. But that's not gonna happen to these cuties because they're here as educational ambassadors for people to interact with. Ooh, sorry, cappies, come back. This is a little bit dirty, let me clean it. There you go, get some clean corn. Oh my God, look how cute this guy is. Isn't this adorable? You guys must love these capybaras mm -hmm. so much. And they're so socialized, they're doing great. Oh, yummy, 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 look at you. They're just so cute. And you guys can do this at Wild Florida on a private tour. Isn't this insane? You can feed the world's biggest rodent. You can interact with porcupines, get close to critically endangered lemurs, and see some of the biggest crocodiles and alligators around. What are you doing? You guys are just like little little blenders going away at this corn. Look at the corn, look how much damage they do, even to the cob. I gotta watch my fingers, I'm gonna lose the fingertip. Not gonna be from a crocodile, it's gonna be from a big rat. Here, oh, 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 oh. Look at that. You guys are just so cute. Are they okay with petting? Mm, I don't know. They're learning. Yeah. They're learning? That one's probably the most socialized. Obviously, he's the one that's coming over. Look at, that. Look at that face. Isn't that just the cutest face ever? Oh my goodness. And you can see the resemblance to a guinea pig. So they're just like really big guinea pigs. They're like uh, mini hippos. Ooh, so cute. Look at them turn apart. Oh, watch my finger, watch my finger. You gonna take it over there? Thank you so much for letting me feed you. You guys are just the cutest. Can I touch your web feet? Oh, so cool. Capybaras, biggest rodent on the planet. They're like fighting for the corn. 
Especially when they're huge, too. <laughs> what are you doing? Fight for that corn? Spooked you? What's up, little baby? The smallest one, too. He's the yeah. most. And, and you're so, you're so friendly. Oh, he has such a cute face. Look at that. What a cool animal. And they can just jump into the water and disappear. Oh, you're gonna fight? Little guineas are gonna fight? Sure. Oh, hello, sweet baby. Oh, some corn. Oh. So like we were saying earlier, it's pretty chilly here in Florida right now. It's like no sun, it's overcast, and it's probably like 58 degrees or 55 degrees, really chilly, chilly for a sloth. But every exotic animal in here has heating. So this is a special room inside a big, beautiful enclosure for the sloths. So they choose to hang out in here because they have heat lamps and they have a heat panel keeping them nice and toasty. Check this beautiful sloth out. Gorgeous, nice big two-toed. He's coming out. Oh, are you gonna come? All right, let's make way for the sloth, everyone, move! Oh, a little wink. No, oh, you see that? He's like, I'll come, okay, I'll come out there. I'll say These things have some crazy water. teeth, too. Yeah, I've heard the bites are really nasty. I also yeah. heard somebody at one of these facilities down here in South Florida, a keeper was just relaxed around the sloth. He was trying to move it, and it actually took its claws and sliced his neck and actually cut his carotid, and he had to go to the hospital. Really? He, yeah, a sloth. You'd think they're slow, methodical, and they can't hurt you but they could actually slash you pretty good with those claws. Well, they're super strong too. Look at this, come close, check out this beautiful face. Look at that, such a beautiful, beautiful face. So in between the two species, the main species of sloth, the two-toed and the three-toed, the two-toed, this happens to be one of the cutest. Look at that big snoop, look at that big, oh, can I boop you up, boop, oh, so cute. Are you hungry? You see those big, big fangs inside the mouth? You're gonna see them in a second. Check this out. They have huge fangs that are no joke. If they bit you, it's a nasty bacterial bite. But the good thing is, Billy's done such a great job working with these animals, desensitizing them, training them, getting them used to interacting with the public. Look at him, see how he holds the corn with those two toes? That's why they got that famous name, Two-Toed Sloth. These hooks help the sloth climb perfectly throughout the trees, even upwards to 100 plus feet up into a canopy in Central and South America. So cool. And you know, these guys do have predators. They do have birds of prey like the harpy eagle that try to prey upon them and things like uh, uh, pumas, you know, the, the Central and South American version of a panther, a Florida panther. They'll actually find these guys, climb up a tree and grab them, just take them down like easy pickings, like apples off a tree. But because they have such a beautiful natural camouflage, most of the time they can hide themselves from these animals. And as well as that they have natural growth of mosses and they have allergies and all kinds of things that grow on their fur. Their scent is hidden in a way too that they can avoid these predators with such great noses that can scope them out. Look at this, look at this. Oh my goodness, you gotta be careful with those claws. You might claw me up, oh. Can I give you a little head massage? Little, ooh, ooh. oh, you have such nice ears, check this out. Look at the sloth's ears, it's hidden wonders. Look at this, beautiful little ears. You see those ears? Oh my God. And those are just for, hey, what's going on, dude? How you doing today? Just so you can get close and whisper to them, see how they're doing, do a little checkup. That's what Billy does every day, checks up on the sloths. And there's actually another sloth in here, but that one's in the back, nice and cold up. Again, nice and cozy. Look at that, corn on the cob. <laughs> And it's just, it's insane to think that you guys could come here and get a tour and do exactly what I'm doing right now. Get this close to a big sloth and feed it corn. Isn't this amazing? You guys probably want to know what a sloth smells like. Let me, let me let you guys know. Give me a second. Just like I said, like nothing. They don't smell bad. They don't smell like anything. And that's a good way for them to avoid predators out in the wild. And their fur, it's like coarse. It's like, it's, it's not soft, but it's like, uh, it's like if your girlfriend never used conditioner, and I know about that because I just learned about using conditioner. It's real, real rough hair. Look at that, beautiful. It's incredible to think that these guys will have a whole ecosystem, a micro ecosystem living in their fur with the moss, with the moths and other kinds of insects living, co-mingling inside this fur. It's crazy, carrying a whole world on your back. The sloth, so cool. Yeah, you're gonna get that little piece right there. You got some corn stuck in your mouth. Huh? Is that good? Oh my goodness. Gotta love it here at Wild Florida. Definitely check out Wild Florida. If you guys are ever in Florida, check it out. Great stop to see some amazing wildlife and have an experience of a lifetime. I love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful. Stay safe. Stay warm. And uh, 
Stay passionate about what you guys love. I'll see you on the next one. Ooh. If this animal was upset, he would basically just reverse right into me, fill me up with quills, stab me in the throat. I might want to back up just a little bit.